Hey, Mike Page from Fargo Raid here. Did you know that a new player, some guy by the name of Shane Van Belching, evidently showed up at the Race to 15 Ape All event in Duluth, Minnesota last week? This new guy, Van Belching, logged over 200 games during the course of the tournament, so he'll have an established rating by the end. Let's track Van Belching's progress here. He played 16 games in his first match, and then in his second match he played 21 games for a total of 37, and then 27 games for a total of 64 after three matches, and then 91, 111, 136, 165, 190, and then finally for a total of nine matches he played 211 games. Now think about this, each race to 15 match has about the number of games a league player plays in a month. And if you play nine race to 15 matches, like Mr. Van Belching did over the course of a weekend, you are simulating about what a league player plays in a year. By tracking Van Belching's progress over the weekend, we're more or less simulating the progress of a new player using Fargo Rate LMS over the course of a year. Van Belching's first match was against Omar Al Shaheen from Kuwait, who's rated 775, is uh, really doing wonders on the world stage, has been traveling around the U.S. Qu uh, quite a lot. He's ranked about 75th in the world by Fargo rating. Van Belging had a 15-1 to loss to Omar. Let's think about what that means. If you play 16 games against somebody, if you split them 8-8, eight to eight, then Van Belching would be playing at the same speed as Omar. He'd be playing at 775. If Van Belching won a third of them, he'd be playing 100 points lower. 1-4, to four, 200 points lower. 1 to 8, 300 points lower. 1 to 16, 400 points lower. He's very close to 16 to 1 against Omar Al Shaheen, 400 points lower than Omar. So here we are. Fargo right now has a preliminary rating for Mr. Shane Van Belching. It's 385. If you looked up Mr. Van Belching after this play uh, in the Fargo right app, you'd see he has a preliminary rating of 385. It's based upon 16 games. If forced to guess at this point, we'd say Mr. Van Belching plays at about the level of an average league player in a low to mid-range league. Second match against Gene Albright, bar box legend in the upper Midwest. Uh, great guy, Mr. Perfect Aim. Recent speed of 682. Mr. Van Belching had a 15-6 to win over Gene Albright. So taking the two matches together, after 37 games, we'd say Mr. Van Belching is performing at 683 speed. Not pro speed, but top amateur speed. Next match was a 15 to 12 win against Shining Young US Moscone Cup team star Billy Thorpe rated 763. In fact, for the purposes of this video, every member of the US Moscone Cup team except for Van Boning was was here. So now after 64 games, Mr. Van Belching is performing at about 730 speed. So it's not top pro speed, but it's definitely pro speed. All right, fourth match against John Mora from Canada 784. 15 to 12, fifth match against James Aranis, uh, Roy's baseman phenom from the Philippines, 803, 15 to 6. That leads us to 91 games, 756, solid pro speed, and 111 games, 788, top 50 in the world speed. Sixth match against top Canadian Jason Klatt, 15 to 10. Seventh match against Moscone star Sky Woodward. Uh, with a thrilling uh, hill hill sick bank combination to win. Leads us to 794 at 137 games and 795 at 166 games. And finally, last two matches against uh, Tyler Steyer, who had an incredible tournament, uh, 15 to 10 and 15 to 6. Leads us to 190 games at 795. And finally, an established rating, 211 games at 8.03. Now, the, the really astute amongst you might have caught that Shane Van Belching is really Shane Van Boning in disguise. And he actually has an established rating of 8.22 based upon about 15,000 games in the system. What you can see here is that this 200 games got him an established rating that is in the ballpark. It would put him at the top 20 in the world. So let's go back to not knowing who this person is and, and ask the question, how useful would these preliminary ratings that we see here be? Uh, 
it takes 200 games to have a Fargo rating. We don't even call it a Fargo rating if you don't have 200 games. But these are what we call preliminary performance ratings, all except for the last ones. Performance ratings. How useful would they be? Well, the first one is over 400 points off. The second one is 150 points off from where it wants to be. Third one is 90 points off, uh, and so forth. It takes over 100 games before you even start getting into the ballpark where this is really a useful preliminary rating. And this is a particularly egregious situation because think of it, this is the second best player in the world, and that first point is a 15-1 loss. Shane broke dry and Omar put a 10-pack on him. That doesn't happen very often. This is where what we call a starter rating would be useful. Suppose, for example, that we had some inkling that this new guy was pro speed. We didn't know he was world class, but we th knew he was pro speed, so we might give him a starter rating of 720. It's a guess of where he plays. And then the preliminary rating we would use for this new person, instead of the 385 that he's performed the 16 games at, is a blend of that 385 for 16 games and 720 for the remaining games leading to 200, so 184 games. So the blended preliminary rating would be much closer to the 720 than it is to the 385. And then after the second match, the new preliminary rating, shown in purple here, uh, still depends more on the starter guess than it does on performance, but performance is weighted in a little bit more heavily. In this way, you can have a preliminary rating that is tethered to your starter guess uh, and less so as you approach 200 games. Once you get 200 games, the starter guess is completely forgotten. So starter ratings are not really part of the Fargo rate system. They're just a convenient way to introduce prior or local knowledge for players that don't yet have a Fargo rating. If you were going to start a new league in your area that uses Fargo rate LMS or take an existing league and start using Fargo rate LMS, and a lot of your players are new to Fargo ratings, here's what you can expect. The calculated ratings in the early going are going to be pretty unreliable. But there's a fix. If you know anything about your players, let's, let's say you know A, B, C, D ratings or 4, 5, 6, 7 ratings from another league approach, or you just happen to know the local pecking order in your area, you can set appropriate starter ratings. You might say, well, isn't this what Fargo Rate is trying to avoid using subjective ratings? Well, yes, absolutely. Once you're to the right-hand side of the chart here, uh, those starter ratings are completely forgotten. What they do is just make the transition a little bit easier. So they're like training wheels for Fargo ratings. So what have we learned here? Performance rating based on only a few games can be way off. General theme for Fargo rate, more data is better. More data makes us stronger. Starter ratings can be a useful tool in the early going. And because we can't say it too many times, more data is better. For your area to get decent ratings, you need to be getting data in through Fargo rate LMS. If you decide to wait for six months or till the next session or next year, you still have to start at the beginning when you do start, and all of the games played in the intervening time are just opportunity lost. The right time to start getting data in through Vertorate LMS is as soon as practical.